Hey! It's MC Sean Love, whereas in the beat making world, they know me as Metal Gear Solid Beats. Uh, yeah, man. So I'm back. It's been a while. Sorry about that. I want to thank everybody, you know, everybody that's been checking out my beat videos or my beat lessons, rather. I want to thank you guys because I've been getting a lot of dope, you know, compliments and uh, people are real grateful that I've been breaking down things on the SP-1200. I will get to this beat video number three. First, I broke down the basics of the SP-1200 on beat video number one, the lesson one. Then I brought down, uh, I broke down the, uh, the how to filter a bass line on uh, tutorial number two. And this time, we're going to be working with live instruments on the SP-1200. So that's live instruments, break beats, 10 seconds. So we're going to be doing live instruments. We're going to be doing ultimate beats and breaks records, you know, what we used to use back in the 80s. And we're going to be doing it all in 10 seconds. And I'm even going to throw in a couple of other, you know, flavors on there for y'all. So, um, but before I do, I want, to, uh, I want to address some things that's going on with the beat videos and just make it real clear what the intentions are behind here. Um, if you don't like these beat videos, these tutorials, if you don't like my, um, my view or my perspective on, on hip hop and, and, and you know, you can cut them off. I mean, it's not the kind of thing where it's like an open forum and I just want anybody from the ages of 16 to 25 to, uh, to, to voice their opinions too. I'm not trying to host a panel or anything like that. These are tutorial videos. In terms of what I talked about before, which was flack, uh, that's turned into disrespect. You know, they go on the forums and, and they can play forum hockey back and forth all day and learn how to use the technical aspects of their machines and everything like that and ignore that the culture is even there or that it's a part of it. But culture is inextricably linked to hip hop, you know? And, and the sooner that you realize that and respect it, the better off you're going to be. The whole spirit of these videos really is, is, about, um, is about not closing people out because they're younger or because they're, uh, they, they came up in hip hop in a different time than me. The spirit of these videos is really to open a door and share the culture as I know it and as, as I got it because I do have lineage in this. And like I said before, um, as, as far as all the negative comments like this, this guy's the way he speaks, he's trying to be black, this and that. I mean, you gotta look at it like this. Um, I had black teachers who doesn't, and they were greater than me. So who wouldn't want to be like their teacher, you know what I mean? This is for everybody, but everybody is not for this. So when it comes to hip-hop and when it comes to all the elements of hip-hop and, and all the things that hip-hop stands for and has stood for uh, over the years since, uh, since it was first founded, um, it, there's a lot there. There's a lot of meat there, and it's disrespectful to just claim it for yourself. That's like setting up a trading post in the jungle and, and trying to reap your own personal benefits off of something without any paying any mind or any attention to, to anything else that's going around or how it affects other people. Uh, this is culture, and I represent this to the best of my abilities. Um, that being said, today we're going to be working on a beat. Uh, it's going to be live instruments. It's going to be ultimate beats and breaks, and it's going to be all in the SP-1200, so that means it's got to be less than 10 seconds. All right, now, now like I said to y'all before in the last video, this is not necessarily supposed to be a beat that's going to be completed and, and getting ready to be sold for $5,000. This, this, this is a usage of these machines. This is an exploration of these techniques, and this is, uh, this is experimentation. This is, uh, this is about the journey. It's not necessarily about the destination. There's like 25 of these, these records in this collection. Uh, came out in like the late 80s, mid to late 80s, and they're basically a collection of the records that will be being played for break dancers. And uh, so what we got is ultimate breaks and beats. And uh, and I got the whole collection. Any serious producer, whether they want to use them or not, should have most of the collection of the whole collection. You see, they have some dope art on it. And if you go and you play these records, you're gonna hear like the the groundwork. And the, and the breakdowns of some of your favorite classic hip hop records, like Marley Marl used the crap out of these, RZA used the crap out of these, and there's certain breaks that you can use, like uh, Blind Alley or UFO or Champ or anything. You play those records, Pop Belly, right? And when you play those records, you're gonna hear hip hop in its earliest form. So if you can even just take like a fragment of a second of one of those records, uh, like today we're gonna use UFO, and if you could take like a teeny fragment of a second of that record, it's almost like winking to your audience like, yo, yo, there's UFO, man. I was there. I just take all eight outs, and right here you got the sample in, and then you got like the main out. It's just mono, and then you got your eight outs. And what I do is I take eight, you know, outs one through eight and plug them into my mixing board one through eight. It, it's real simple. Uh, the one thing I will say is that each out has a different sound quality to it. So, you know, two, the one that I unplugged for the bass line, that one has a different sound quality to it than seven or eight. You know, and that has a different sound quality to it than three. So you want to experiment inside your machine when you use an SP-1200. And you're going to want to, for example, play a sound, assign a channel to a certain sound. You're, you're going to want to experiment to see what channel that sound sounds best through. And then the next step is to actually toy with that sound again on the mixing board and experiment with the highs and lows. I know I always badmouth all the brand new equipment and everything. 
and swear by the old stuff. But what's nice about the machine is you can uh, you can actually sample things into it and you can manipulate them before you take them into the 1200, you know? So where I can't take a live instrument, I can't take a live instrument and speed it up on a turntable. So I have to find a way to speed it up. I know there's programs you can use where you can record it into the M box and then you can speed it up and all that stuff. But the machine is a nice convenient way to do it. Of course, I'm gonna sample it right into the machine, live guitar. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna put some effects on it. I'm gonna chop it up a little bit. Pick just like flat pick, bit boom. Perfect. The guitar sounds are going to be sped up. Pads. So right now I'm on bank A, and I'm going to do go right into pad one and two to take that boom 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 all right, so, so here's how you sample. Like I said before, you press two. I'm gonna sample into pad A1. I'm gonna set the time. I'm gonna set the threshold, and I'm gonna sample into these two pads. After that, like I told y'all in lesson one, I'm gonna take those two sounds, those two main sounds, I'm gonna put them into bank B pads one and two as bass sounds, right? And the, the way that we make that bass line a little bit filtered, remember, we pull out plug number two, and we also adjust it on our mixer so it sounds a little bass here. So that way they can blend together and also we can pull out the highs versions of the guitars so that way we can uh, get the kind of sound we want. I've slowed down the guitar sound so they sound like this. I've copied them into bank two, pads one and two. So that way if I want to, I can layer them. And also, I could pull out the highs and just leave the bass in. And I'm gonna touch it up with all these different sounds here that I took. Now remember, I only got 10 seconds of sampling time. And my two main samples, that took me like about, you know, almost three and a half seconds. So, that leaves me with like six and a half seconds. So I'm gonna take a little dressing. And remember I taught y'all last time about the echoing. These are the other guitar sounds I took from the live guitar. And because I had about three minutes worth of sample guitar, and I've only got about 10 seconds of time here, what I had to do is I had to preserve the best part for myself. And that's part of the culture of using these old machines. You, you, you can have knowledge of everything, but you, you've gotta be very selective. So I took, to kind of throw that over this, right? Like, right? And then if I want to echo this out, because I told you, you got to make use of echoes in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take setup. I'm going to go to setup. And when I go to setup, I'm going to press 12 so I can do multi-level. I press this pad, of course, and that turns into... Right? When I want to get out of setup, when I want to get out of the uh, multi-level, I stay in setup, but I press 13. It says exit multi-mode. You press yes. Now, just so you know about multi-mode, you can also press 11 and it's, it's multi-pitch. So if I want this to be multi-pitches, it could be like... Right? And if I want to exit that, I press 13 to exit multi-mode. Yes. And I'm back to my regular pads, right? So that way, when I want to do the echo, I can be like... I can have these main samples over, and over that, I'll have... Right? Alright, so then I got something else here for you. This is from the same live guitar session I got. <laughs> Fresh, right? And then after that, I'm gonna, I might want to echo something else after that, to, you know, so I can really fill out that loop. Make that an echo, right? So I'm going to go into setup function 12, multi-level it, right? And then I got, let's see here. So that turns into... Alright, and then, what else do I got? I decided that was enough for the live guitar. And now I'm going to start moving over to my records from Super Session, because I think it's kind of like a fresh little guitar lick. One little piece of this, right? Just because you hear these sounds like, I think this little tweak is sound good in there. And I'm just going to take one little second. Together it's going to be on two pads, pads seven and eight. But I'm just going to be like, bam, bam. right? So I'm going to go into sample mode, get ready to take. Yeah.
So pad seven is, and pad eight is. So I could be like, and now it's time for me to get some drums. And you know me, I gotta get the old school drums. So I took some, some hard drums off the ultimate break beats, right? And what I did was I chopped them up and they're hard as hell. And I got one second left. And I gotta get the right parts. All I want is the eh, 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 eh. I could only take two parts. I wanted to take three, really, but. Show y'all before I do, like I always do, I've got, what's that? 0.1 seconds left. So I took 9.9 .9 seconds, and that's how I got all my samples. Not a, not a millimeter of a second more, right? So let's hear what we got. Yeah, y'all. 